All right, so on today's video, we are going to make a little baking pan for the dolls to use in the kitchen. It translates to pretty close to a 13 by 9 inch pan, and it's a super easy project. You've got a couple of choices. You can make it look like a ceramic or stoneware pan, or you can make it look like an aluminum or metal pan. So stay tuned and see how easy this is. Alright, time to make a video here. So we have, I already showed you in the intro, our project. So I've got both of my examples here that I've already made ahead. Here's what we're going to start with. What we are making these baking pans with is cardstock. This is the cardstock that's sold for scrapbooking and card making. It's heavier than um, printer paper by quite a bit. It's it's pretty solid, it's pretty sturdy, but we're going to make it much heavier. So there's a couple of steps to that. I pre-cut this so you wouldn't have to watch me try to cut around my ruler. This is one and a quarter by two inches and the measurements will be in the blog post. So be sure and check the blog post for that. So first thing we need to do is do some scoring. We are going to score the long sides and I don't remember what order I said in the blog post, but you can do it in any order as long as you get the right measurements. Long sides at a quarter inch. And I've got this knitting needle here on my table, so I'm going to use that. That works. It will make a nice score line that will be, we can fold on. For this white paper, you don't need a really, really, you know, aggressive scoring line. Take your time, make sure everything is straight. Hopefully I'm straight. Now, the ends, the short ends, we're going to start at an eighth of an inch. Got an eighth inch mark here and here. Hopefully I'm getting this straight without being able to put my head right over it. And then at three eighths, this gives us the little lip to hold a fold over on the end, the little handle. So whoever takes it out of the oven in your dollhouse won't. We'll have some place to hold on to it. Now these are nice whether you're going to fill them with food or you can have them just like on the counter or you know wherever, in whatever scene you're using. All right, now next we want to pre-fold on all of our score lines. And this end one I actually like to fold both ways. Make nice crisp folds on these ones going around the center. The better, the more care you take now with these folds, the nicer your pan will be when you're all done. Really crisp. Now, because we made our score lines, we've got a place we know where to trim and cut. So this line here, where the, where the side folds up from the base. We're going to cut it down to the point where it folds up there. Right on that score line. And then I like to cut, well I like to cut off that little tab because we don't need that much folded over. 
and I have to make this just a little a little V out of there, a little little bit. Same thing here. Cut down. You want to cut it first there because you want this edge to be nice and straight. You only want the angle on that one. And cut that tab. Now this part that folds over, I like to to edge mine a little bit. I like to cut off a little bit on those corners. It just makes it look a little nicer. That's up to you. You can round it, you can make it any shape you want. Cut it free. And because we've pre-folded those score lines, it makes it really easy to uh, see where to cut. And we don't end up with pencil marks. Now if you don't have, a, you know, you can draw the lines if you want to, but this way I don't have pencil lines to cover. Now you'll notice I'm using a tan cardstock, or this color is actually called craft when you're looking at the paper. I did that for a couple of reasons. <coughs> Excuse me. We want to coat this in paint. When we start painting it, we are going to paint both sides. And I'll, I'll explain to you when we get that far, but don't paint, the, don't use paper the color that you're going to paint the dish thinking it will make it easier. It will actually make it harder. So now, a little fast grab tacky. And I, don't normally go straight out of the bottle, but this bottle is, um, almost empty and it's I don't really want to waste it by putting it out on my on my tile some little clips I got these handy little clips at Dollar Tree and they work really nicely you can also use a clothespin there Now this glue has to dry completely before we paint. Don't fudge on this step because if you do, you're going to not have as nice a finish. So after the glue dries, we'll be back. Right. It's now that the glue is dry, it's you need to have decided what color or how you're going to finish your pan. If you want to make it look metal, you are going to now base coat it with black. And if you want it to be ceramic, we're going to base coat with white, and that's what I'm going to do today. I noticed that my pan is a little smaller than the ones I made the other day, and that's because I used a different ruler to score it, and that made a, that little tiny bit made a big difference. Now, it's really important when we're painting. This will warp if we only paint one side. So we'll and this is going to be a really messy process. We are going to paint, we want to thoroughly coat the inside. I like to start with the inside. I don't know why, I just do. And now we're going to paint the outside while that's still wet at the very same time. By painting both sides, we minimize, we don't eliminate, but we minimize the amount that this will warp. And I find that if I just, well, let's get it painted. And now just leave it upside down like this. Those little tabs will hold it up off the paper, the tile and it can dry. Now one of the reasons that we used a contrasting color is when this dries, we're going to put two coats on. If at the end of two coats of paint I still see my original color of paper, that will mean I need to add a third coat. So we're going to let this dry. I'll come back. I'll do a second coat off camera and after the second coat is dry, I'll come back and we'll move on. Right, so now we have a good coat of white 
paint on our casserole dish. And kind of need to bend those sides in a little bit, but it's already a lot stronger than just the paper. Now we make a decision. Do we want to leave it all white? I like the look of the darker color of paint on the outside, so I'm going to use red this time. I picked up this red paint. I was doing some picking up in here and it was kind of in with some other stuff. So now we are free. Now that we've sealed this pretty well, we can paint just the outside. And depending on the look you're looking for, you might want two coats or you might just want one. Oops. The secret is getting this on without getting paint all over the inside. Although you can touch up the white on the inside if you get any in there. So now, make sure that's all coated. I'm going to let this dry. After this is dry, uh, I think I'll just leave it the way it is and then we'll put our clear coat on. All right, so I'm not going to put another coat of paint on. I could eat, neaten that up a bit, but for this I'm not going to bother. Now to make this look not like painted paper, to make it look more like ceramic, we're going to put a coat of triple thick on. I know for a while people were using a lot of triple thick in miniatures to do food, and I really don't like it for that. But for this, it, I really think it works really nicely because it's, like the name says, it's thick. One coat gives a really nice shiny finish that looks, it gives the illusion of ceramic or glass or whatever, you know, stoneware. And it seems to level itself out fairly well so you don't end up with brush strokes. I've, so far I have not had to do multiple coats with this product. It does have a slight smell, um, but I like it a lot for this. So put a coat on and then flip your container over and put a coat on the inside. When I get that done, I'll be back. All right, so that's how easy these are to make. And the triple thick does make a really nice shiny surface and it really strengthens the um, the paper and makes it a lot more firm. So I hope you enjoyed this project. Be sure and ch check the blog post. I've got the um, dimensions there and a few other hints and tips. And stay tuned till next week and see what we make then. Bye.